What's up everyone, it's your guy Joseph Green and welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to share with you guys my stats of when I applied to dental school. I had a, a lot of requests. There was a high amount of people asking, what did you make on your DAT? What was your GPA when you submitted? So I feel like this video is gonna be for you guys and for anyone else who's applying the cycle or the cycle after that. And also the application just opened up. So this is gonna be beneficial for a lot of people right now. So first off, my major was biomedical science at Sam Houston State University. My GPA when I applied was a 3.41, but my GPA on the application was a 3.15. And the reason why it's different is because Sam Houston calculates your cumulative GPA differently than how the application does when you apply to dental school. See, at my school, they calculate retakes. Um, they just take the two grades and they take the highest one and replace it. But on the application, when you retake a class, they take both of your grades and they average it out. So if you made an A on the retake, but you made a C originally, it'll average it out so you'll make a B on your GPA. My science GPA ended up being, I believe it was a 3.67. Um, some people may ask, why was your science GPA so much higher than your cumulative? Well, my case was a little bit different than other people. When I first came in, I wasn't too sure on if I wanted to be a doctor. I always wanted to when I was a, when I was a kid, but I wasn't sure if I'd be able to. So, first two years of college, I wasn't really focused. I wasn't really, um, I wasn't even a, a biomedical science major yet. I was just something random, um, doing pretty bad in classes. I didn't really care, which is which is bad. But after around two years, I decided I did want to be a doctor. Then I picked dentistry, and from there, I just mostly A's. So that's why my science GPA was higher because I didn't take any sciences whenever I was in my first two years of college when I didn't take school seriously. So that was a blessing for me and it helped me keep my science GPA on the higher side compared to my cumulative GPA. And I'm gonna touch more on that when I make the My Journey video in the next couple of weeks. And it was pretty cool because in my interviews as well, they asked me, why is your science GPA so much higher than your cumulative? And I, I just told them my story they noticed my high trend, how I went from um, maybe a C average student to high B, A average student. And it just made me look that much more interesting to them. My DAT score was a 19. I made a 19 in my total science score, 19 in my academic average, and 19 on the PAT. So for me personally, I was aiming for something higher, but I wasn't just taking the DAT. I was also retaking two classes, taking genetics and physics too. And I was also um, filling out my application and doing SPEP, which is a summer program for Texas A&M College of Dentistry. I was doing all of that in one summer. So it was kind of hard to really focus on the DAT, but I'm just lucky that I was able to at least get a 19, which is um, a pretty good score if you're trying to get into dental school. And I'm gonna touch more on the DAT whenever I make my how I study for my DAT video in the next couple of weeks. It was funny too, because I thought about retaking my DAT because of um, how, how high my expectations were compared to what I got. But then within the next couple of weeks after I submitted, or once my scores were official, I got my first interview. So I didn't have to retake the DAT, which that's a blessing because I did not want to spend $500 to retake the DAT. But of course we know applying to dental school isn't just stats. So let's talk about other things that I had on my application that made me stand out as an applicant. So we know whenever you apply, they look at GPA, DAT, but then they also look at extracurriculars like your leadership, what you were involved in on campus, maybe what you're doing off campus, and also things like volunteering and shadowing. Volunteering wise, I didn't have that many hours. I had around 51, 52, but the thing that stood out I guess to them was my volunteer experiences were different. For example, one volunteer experience I had was we put on an open mic to um, raise um, toiletries and stuff like that for Hurricane Harvey victims. So everyone who wanted to participate in the open mic had to donate to the cause. Shadowing wise, I had around 82 hours and 82 is decent, but you definitely want to aim for more like 100, 150. It was okay for me because I applied when COVID hit and I wasn't able to get all the hours I wanted because COVID did affect um, how many times I could go to the office if I could at all. So I really recommend anyone watching to at least aim for 100, I would recommend 150. 
some extracurriculars I was involved in, the list goes on and on, but I was involved in, um, I was the president for my pre-dental society. I was also the treasurer for a little bit and the assistant president. I was a peer mentor for a minority organization on campus. I was a supplemental instructor for OCHEM on campus. Um, I had a lot of work experience. I worked security um, as a security guard. I worked at the YMCA. I worked at a gas station. Um, in terms of just extracurriculars, my application was packed. So they could also see how a lot of those things took away from the time I could use from studying. So I guess they factored that in too. And quick note, a lot of my extracurriculars um, working wise was whenever I wasn't a pre-dental student yet. So they saw how I was working a lot those first two years and I had bad grades. But once I transitioned to pre-dental, I stopped working as many hours to take um, initiative to focus more on my school. So they pointed that out too, that it looked good on my application. Now, lastly, besides extracurricular and things like that, they look at your letter of recommendations and your personal statement. So your letter of recommendation, that's a very, very key factor if you wanna stand out as an applicant. For my application, I had pretty good letters of recs because I was always in my professor's office hours. If I didn't understand something, I always went to my professor's office hours. And that just built that relationship. So when I applied, not only did I have you know decent stats, I also had strong letters of recs. Also, your personal statement holds weight too. I had a pretty good personal statement, I would say. I had my professors look over it. I had um, the career services department on my campus look over it. I just had a lot of different people look over it, check grammar, make suggestions to make the, the letter just sound better. And it came out pretty good. So I recommend if you're writing your personal statement, have other people um, check it out. And also be open to constructive criticism. It won't be perfect the first time, but if you listen to what people tell you and how you can make it better and you work hard, you could have it sounding nice and it will benefit you in the end. So final tips for this video, don't focus on other people, focus on you. I talk to a lot of students that tell me, what did you make on the DAT? How many extracurricular leadership did you have on your application? Well, don't focus on other people, focus on yourself. If you feel like you have two things on your application that's too little, go do something else to become more competitive. You can't always look at other people because every application is different and they judge it differently. Second, if you don't get in and you see someone else got in, don't try and compare with them and say, oh, he got lower stats than me. Um, how did he get in and I didn't? Again, they compare everyone differently whenever they're selecting people for interviews. And last tip, just always remember, people with lower stats might get in um, and people with higher stats might not get in. It might be because the person with higher stats didn't have that many shadowing hours. It could be because the person with lower stats just had more leadership or they had stronger letters of regs. You never know. So always be humble. Just remember that you're your own applicant and you need to focus on making yourself the best applicant possible. And that's it for this video. Please like, comment, and share it to your other pre-dental friends. I'm on the road to 100 subscribers, so please subscribe. And yeah, that's it. I'm out.